solid ice cream in there. Slim Dog Science with me, Caleb Flynn. Subscribe, like, comment, and hit that bell. What's up, science lovers? Today we're gonna look at the science of ice cream. We're gonna look at two parts. We're gonna look at what does the salt do when we put that on the ice? Why do we need that salt at all? And then second, what happens to the energy as it flows around? In order to do this, we're gonna need some materials. Let's get those. In this jar, we're gonna have water, 40 mils, and in this jar, we're gonna have our chocolate ice cream mixture, sugar, chocolate powder, and half and half. Let's stir it up. And then we'll need the same thing in this jar. All right. Now we need a little bit of ice in both of them. And we'll take the temperatures to see what we're starting at. So we got ice in both now. Let's see what the temperature is in the jar, in the water, and in their ice cream mixture in both jars. And then I'm gonna add the salt, and when I add the salt, that will officially start the experiment. The water's at 15, ice cream mixture's at nine, and the very bottom of our jar here is at zero. Over in this jar, before we add the salt, we're at 15 in the water, nine in the ice cream mix, and the bottom of the jar is also at zero. We're gonna add salt here. This will be our test group. And we'll see what does adding salt to the ice do in freezing our ice cream. Does the ice cream still freeze when we don't add the salt? And then we'll try to figure out our results once we get those. Got all this chocolate on my fingers. Here comes the salt. Can you hear that? That's really cool. It's crackling. Let me push the salt down in there. I'm gonna let this run now for 20 minutes. Watch what observations you see on the outside of the jars, and I'll tell you about the temperatures on the inside of the jars once we end that 20 minutes. We let that run for about 25 minutes, but we got a pretty nice result now. First off, look at what observations you can make. Check out the water on the bottom versus the water on the bottom here. The salt in the ice has so much more water in the bottom, like twice as much. Second thing to notice, just the ice has all this condensation on it, so it's got a lot of condensation, but the condensation is not frozen. Over on this jar, Look at this. It's totally frozen. Let me give you a real close up of that. Look at the jar that just has the ice in it. It has all this condensation. Very cool. But then the jar that has the ice and the salt is all frozen on the outside. That is really wild. Why would it do that, do you think? Look at that. You can scratch it. Oh, man. You got to try that. Whereas the one with just the ice, it's just water. Isn't that really wild? So let's look at our final temperatures now and see what happened with our data. In the jar, let's see what temperature the water's at. So the temperature there, it was just a little below zero. So this water down here, zero degrees. Let's look at the water. Right at zero degrees also. Our ice cream mixture is very um, chocolate milky. So not frozen, maybe slightly thicker, but definitely not frozen. And it's at zero. Let's look over here. The big jar, the water at the bottom, it's at negative seven, negative seven. Our water, oh, look at that. It froze it. It's just like a popsicle in there. I can't even take the thermometer up. It looks like, 
Well, I can't quite tell. Okay, it looks like it's at negative one. Negative one for that one. But look how neat that is. Totally frozen. You see that? Maybe you can kind of see the temperature. Really cool. And our ice cream. Ooh, very slushy. I didn't stir it very much, so it's kind of a little clumpy. But it's at negative three. So our ice cream's at negative three. And you can see it, it's not really a liquid, right? It'd probably start to spill out here. It's pretty solid, so we get some drips. But pretty solid ice cream in there. With those things in mind, we need to draw a diagram of what happened and try to explain our results for the salt and how energy flowed. And if you wanna know how to just make some yummy ice cream in a bag, check out that video in the link and we'll look at how to make some delicious marshmallow Oreo chocolate ice cream. This is one of my favorite parts of the whole experiment where we try to figure out what in the world was going on. The first thing is let's draw our big jar that has our ice in it and our little jar that has the water in it. We'll label all these things and our big rule is energy flows from high to low. So our ice was H2O solid and the water was H2O liquid. On the outside we had water vapor which we'll see is H2O gas and then the water vapor condensed on the side and became H2O liquid, our water vapor, H2O gas, and then that condensation froze on the bottom into ice. So the water vapor condensed into H2O liquid, and then the condensation froze into ice, H2O solid. We added salt to the experiment, and what did the salt do? We saw that crackling and the water level immediately start to rise, and that was because the ice started to melt here. So we saw the ice melting, and the H2O liquid level rising. And the temperature inside went from our room temperature, it was about 18, but then by the time the temperature actually started and we recorded it, it was at nine. And then it dropped all the way down to zero by the end of the experiment. And then the water in the bottom of the jar started out at zero degrees Celsius, and then it dropped all the way down to a final temperature of negative eight degrees Celsius. So it started, at, so our temperature by the time it actually started was nine degrees Celsius. So what's going on with energy? In order to figure that out, let's draw the phases of water at different temperatures here. And we'll take special note of water at zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. Ice is H2O solid, and that's our very low energy. As we add energy, we could take a cup of ice and melt it, and then it's gonna become a cup of water as we add this energy. So that ice melts as energy is added. Then it becomes liquid water, and the liquid water, the temperature rises, it's medium energy as we add more energy to that. So adding energy to the melting and to the liquid water melts the ice and then raises the temperature of liquid water, and then eventually will vaporize that liquid into a gas. And that's our highest energy form of water that we'll have here. Then when water is condensing, we're going to remove energy. And when the liquid water cools off, more water, more energy is removed. And then when it freezes, more energy is removed as that liquid water becomes ice. So if we think about that in terms of our experiment, the water vapor is high energy. That's kind of like our gas. The condensation, um, that would be liquid water. That's our medium energy. And the ice, solid, that's going to be like our low energy form of water here. And the water or ice cream in our test tube in the center would be medium energy because that's liquid when we started. And then our ice is going to be our low energy. So how did energy flow? The water in our test tube in the center cooled, so that means energy was leaving. It was going into that low energy ice. It was going from a higher energy to a lower energy. The water vapor, as it went from a higher energy to a lower energy, it gave energy away to condense and as the condensation cooled off, it gave energy into that lower energy ice, going high to low, so that the condensation eventually froze on the outside. Since the water in the bottom went from zero to negative eight, uh, it cooled below its freezing point, which is kind of cool and a little bit weird, because the normal freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. So let's zoom in on this equilibrium here of melting and freezing between water at zero degrees Celsius. 
how does salt affect the H2O solid and the H2O liquid equilibrium at zero degrees Celsius? If we draw our ice cube here, we see our ice H2O solid. When energy is added to that, our ice cube melts. The melted water will add, put energy back into the ice, which cools the water surrounding the ice. And as that water cools, it wants to refreeze. So if we draw that in a little bit of an equation here, we can say as energy goes into the H2O solid ice, it melts the ice, becoming H2O liquid, and then the liquid puts energy back into the solid, which cools the water, making the solid want to refreeze, and all that happens at zero degrees Celsius. But what does salt do? Salt comes in and blocks the refreezing of H2O liquid back into the solid. So the liquid keeps giving energy into that solid ice, cooling off until eventually the liquid gets so cold it gets to negative eight degrees and then it starts going back to the ice again. We reestablish the equilibrium. So our salt is blocking the refreezing. So water gives energy to the ice, cooling off the ice, making it want to refreeze, but the salt is blocking the refreezing. And how is it doing that? Well, if we draw a little ice crystal here and then zoom in on water, water is partially polar. It has a positive hydrogen end and a positive negative end. They're actually partially positive, which means that overall it's still neutral. And the positives and negatives attract to each other. So the negative oxygen end sticks to that partially positive hydrogen end, forming a hydrogen bond. Salt comes in and gets in the way of those hydrogen bonds so that they can't stick to each other. And since they can't stick, they can't form our cool crystal structure. Uh, so our salt blocking that crystal structure doesn't allow the crystal structure to form so that water stays stuck in this little bit higher energy liquid phase. So our low energy ice and our medium energy water, the water keeps giving energy to that low energy ice. And so the water keeps getting colder and colder. So salt blocks the ice crystal formation until negative eight degrees Celsius. And that is why we need salt for ice cream when we are shaking it in that bag or whether you make it in your little homemade ice cream maker. Thanks for hanging out. That was really fun. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the science of ice cream. If you like that, consider subscribing and we'll have some more fun videos coming out soon. See you next time. I let the jar sit for just another minute. Check this out. Boom! Totally frozen. How cool is that? That is really cool.